on this episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone, we're going to talk about this week's Wednesday Night War between AEW Dynamite and WWE's NXT. So, sit back, relax, enjoy your beer. Welcome to Deleted Wrestle Zone. Hey everybody, welcome to Deleted Wrestle Zones. I am J-Rob. We're here to discuss all things pro wrestling such as AEW, a NXT, New Japan, many other promotions, all things of pro wrestling, talk and discussions, all of that. So, as you know, we just had the Wednesday Night War. So basically, what, what's going on right now is this week's it show, uh, second week, uh, second or third week in a row, AEW won this week, but... There's been a, a slight dip in the viewership. So basically, AEW has the most views and NXT or not. They're right behind them. But both promotions suffered a couple of percentage down of their previous week on, a, on the last Wednesday Night War. So let's review that part right now. So... AW had about 653,000 views. It went from the last time it, it was up, they went down 11% down from last week. So they rate about 2.3. No, uh, no, so basically it was alright. And XC, on the other hand, only had 604,000 views. Uh, it went down 9% from their previous week. And they received a rate of 1.5. No, 1. No, point one five. Sorry about that, folks. I'm still feeling a little, a little nuts. So, I mean, we can say yes. What's been going on? I've been hearing other people saying maybe the reason all of this was happening. A, I can say maybe because people are watching the news because of what's been going on out in the world with the whole pandemic. Others are saying they're not enjoying seeing WWE and AW trying to. Um, do much as possible with no crowds. I mean, I know it's difficult that you don't get the reaction from the crowds when they're there, when you're at home watching, but there's nothing that <coughs> they can do about it, but they're trying to find a way to keep things safe for all fans, you know, who go there, but also the talent who's there because their safety is a top priority. So I think that's pretty much what's been happening. So hope you guys enjoy this part. So we're going to start right now. With the winners of this Wednesday, AEW. All right, so um, it started out with Lance Archer and Jake Roberts coming out, uh, saying about what happened last week, what they did to Brandy, you know, putting the snake on her. And Jake said that he's being asked to apologize for happening. But he's saying, you know, that it's not his fault that women are not... Are, not supposed to be there, they're home, all this kind of a little promo thing. And the more he was doing that, that's when Cody shows up in his little pickup truck or something. Uh, had enough of his talk and he uh, got in the face of Lance Archer. There was moments where Archer wanted to put him out, but he Cody wouldn't. So basically this is becoming escalation and Jake told Snake... Uh, Jake told Lance, you know, right, we'll just leave right now. You know, they want to save the, this whole fight till double or nothing. Because this is something that in the storyline, how it's going, where Jake has been demanding a little one-on-one -on -one action with Cody against his boy, Lance Archer. So it's because he's been calling him Caesar and all this other stuff. So it's far from over between both Lance and Cody. The next thing we go is the... Um, the Jurassic Express, Jungle Boy, and Luchasaurus alongside Marco versus the best friends alongside Orange Cassidy. This one was a great tag team. I think this one was good. Um, there was a moment where uh, Cassidy was covering his face. You can't even tell if he's awake or or, or a 
asleep because of the sunglasses and covering his mouth, but it was a great moment. Uh, there were some great um, spots in there in the tag team in this match. I It was fun. I enjoyed it the most. Um, but there was a moment in this one where Orange Cassidy was trying to hype up um, Trent. Out of nowhere, he gets clobbered by Ray Phoenix. And then in the midst of all that, when both Trent and Chucky... Uh, Chuck Taylor were trying to confront Ray. MJF pulls out of uh, Jungle Boy and what and kind of makes sure that he's down for the count. Try to wear him down because he knows he has a match against him. And then um, when unaware to the best friends and Aubrey Edwards, the ref, um, Chuck Taylor took the advantage, he, even though he didn't see it, so he won the match. But later, all things were breaking loose. You see Warlow um, slamming through the barricade, Marco stunt, and you see Luchasaurus right in front of him. Now I know this is something that should happen in Double or Nothing. See these two behemoths face off each other because that that would be a sell. I mean, you guys would agree about that, but it didn't happen. I mean, they should make a match between those two because it would be an interesting match and a story between, you know, MJF knows he's gonna face against Jungle Boy. But his bodyguard is gonna be should be facing against Luchasaurus, so it's gonna be it should happen. I mean, what do you guys think? You should leave a comment. And tell me what you think about that. Next up, um, of course, Moxley's arrived. He he is still not too pleased about what happened with Brody Lee taking his title, but at the same time, Brody Lee attacked him with his little minions, trying to convince him to give him a title shot even though Moxley told him dude all you gotta ask but he took the title that's what he he feels that it's something he needs something he wants not like he earned it or anything he just wants it so he's not happy so he, he's out for for vengeance if you look at it clearly then we had that four-way women's match between Penelope Ford Chris Santlander Dr. Britt Baker and Hikaru Shida now we uh Hikaru Shida, if you guys know, she is ranked number one in the rankings in line for a women's <coughs> match. So basically there's still love in the match. There was still no love loss between both Hikaru Shida and Britt Baker after what's been going on. Britt Baker's still going on saying she's a role model, saying that Hikaru Shida will never be the role model that she is, but and all of a sudden while wow, there's like moments where we see Penelope Ford with Chris Sattler. And it was a great match. We've been seeing back and forth. Like, we know there'll be temporary lines for a little bit and then back to business. That's up a thing. Even though Chris uh, Kip Sabian tries to ensure that the Penelope Ford wins, but there was a moment where he grabbed Hikaru Shida and Penelope Ford was about to take her out, but got in the way. She nearly hit Kip and they made out, but Hikaru Shida gave. Both of them and in Sigari while they were making out. That was a thing of beauty. But the match ended where uh, Britt was in the face of Chris Lander, but Hikaru Shida took out Penelope Ford and she became the winner. So uh, that's going to be an interesting match. But also, it's been confirmed now that Hikaru Shida will face Nala Rose in a no DQ disqualification match. Basically, what happened is, during a post-interview, here comes Nyla Rose, and she whacks her with the kendo stick, saying, I found something lost. And if you guys have been following being the Elite or her Twitter page, she's been looking for her kendo stick, and she hasn't seen found it yet. So, that's kind of, like, interesting. Uh, let's see what else happened. Um, of course, we had... Uh, Pineapple Pete, better known as Shug D. Uh, great story about how they're introducing him into the um, AEW. I don't know if, if Jericho put him over because every time when they were at the North Cross um, show, doing the North Cross shows down at the Nightmare Factory, he keeps calling Shug D Pineapple Pete because he's wearing the shirt and he just keeps... So, uh, Shug D kind of embraced it knowing, you know, Hey, Jericho, I didn't have a problem with you, but it seems you're the one who had a problem. But thank you. Thank you for putting me over. So it, it kind of like he's embracing 
the pineapple Pete that he's been calling me, even though Chris Jericho doesn't like him. So, so it's kind of interesting how Jericho put him over, if you guys know what I mean. Um, then we had the match, a tag team match. This one's another good one between Proud and Powerful versus Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy. Uh, Proud and Powerful took out Kenny before the start of the match, but we weren't sure about Matt Hardy. Who was he going to dress up as? We, he had many essence that he's been been dressed up like we saw the week ago. Um, he had the, the old Matt Hardy that we knew back in, back in the day, and then there's Damascus, but he showed up as Damascus, which was a lot of fun. And um, it was a great match. I don't know. Like I feel even though Kenny is tag team with Hamman, I, I I think down the line we should see a tag team group between both Kenny and and Matt. You got to remember both these guys have been specialized in tag team. I mean, who could forget Kenny with um, Kota Ibushi, Matt Hardy with his brother Jeff? I mean, that's pretty cool to do. But it was a great match. I'm not gonna lie. But there was a moment throughout the match. Here comes Sammy with the little neck brace, who still hasn't forgotten what Matt Hardy did to him, where he ran him over. Which was too funny. You know, you can still see that on Twitter. You know, <laughs> I think it's a classic moment, you know, of that. But in result, Kenny and Matt Hardy won. Now, the next thing we see is an interview with Taz, who, in a way, he is offering his assistance to Darby Allen. Like, he's trying to help him. Like, he's well aware about what happened because. He was telling him, I know you lost, but the way you lost, it was unpredictable because if you guys remember, Cody, you know, Darby did the coffin drop, but somehow Cody was able to move him and have his shoulders down and got the pinfall. And I think Darby Allen has been beating himself maybe because he didn't predict it, something like that was going to happen, or who knows, but Taz has been offering to help him because I look at Taz as that one guy who's like he believes in this character this guy okay I see potentially I see you are good you people love you you are relentless for what you do so he's trying to help Darby but Darby is the kind of person who doesn't need help he is who he is he doesn't need nobody but you may never know where they're gonna go with this storyline um next thing we see is MJF versus Lee Johnson. It was a squash match. But, uh, if you must know, MJF won. As soon as the match was over, uh, MJF made it clear for next week he wants to face against Marco Stunt. This is his way of trying to humiliate um, Jungle Boy because he knows he has to face him in, in Double or Nothing and he's not going to tolerate Jungle Boy. Because he keeps saying he is better than him and he knows it. But Jungle Bay doesn't know that. That's until you get to the ring. Then we see the match between Pineapple Pete, a.k.a. Shug B, versus Chris Jericho. And not to mention, um, it was a right story. But Jericho got the best of him when he gave him the Judas effect. Now, as moment, he made a decision that he wants to face the Elite once more but this time in what he called a stadium stampede at double or nothing. So basically, he wants to face them all because he's making fun of the Bucks who are currently at home, saying that how credible he is. That's not what they're thinking. They're just upset they're not there, but the problem is this whole situation. And Hangman criticizing him that he's somewhere in the forest in North Carolina. But here comes Vanguard giving, telling them that the elite accept. And at the moment that happened... Jericho wax Vanguard 1 with the bat. And of course, Vanguard is destroyed. The inner circle thinks it's funny. But I have a feeling there is another Vanguard coming. And this one will not take lightly to what happened to Vanguard 1. I guarantee you, there will be another Vanguard. There's going to be another one. Trust me on that. Um, next thing we have is... The greatest news around, I don't know what you guys think of it, um, it's been announced now that Mike Tyson is going to be at Double or Nothing presenting the TNT Championship match. Now, 
this is big news. This is something that AEW needs to get more fans to get interested in AEW. I know that WWE has been trying to convince fans, no, these guys are nothing. But it's not. It hasn't worked so far. Because they're still beating NXT no matter what. I know the last two, a couple weeks ago, they lost two weeks in a row, but it, had, it didn't change anything. So, um, but yeah, um, you guys tell me what you think. Do you think this idea of Mike Tyson going to AEW is a good thing? Leave a comment down below or not. Now, the main event is Christopher Daniels versus Mr. Broly. Now, this is, I don't know what they were going with this part of the story with Brody Lee. If you recall, I mentioned about this with um, Impact Wrestling about Moose, that he proclaimed himself as the TNA World Champion. He thinks he is the World Champion because he beat former TNA wrestlers, such as RVD, um, who else? <coughs> RVD, Ken Shamrock. And now Brody Lee is telling Daja Gonzalez, he is the self-proclaimed champion. He thinks he is the champion. Uh, newsflash, Brody Lee, you haven't beaten Moxley. You took the title. Just because the title doesn't make you the champion. And it was a good match, not to mention. Even though... Um, there was some... thing is, everybody assumed, oh, uh, Daniels is going to lose this match. But it didn't happen that way. It kind of flip-flopped a little bit on this one. But yeah... Um, So it, it, it was a great thing to see. But at the moment, you see the, the damn minion shows up out of nowhere. And here comes the other members of SCU, uh, Sky and Kazarian, trying to help. But while that was happening, Broly took out Christopher Daniels and assumed victory. And of course, he wanted Daja Gonzalez to say, still your world champion. Right. We'll see what happens to Double Nothing. And then all of a sudden, here comes Moxley. So Moxley still wants retribution for what the Dark Order did, what Brody Lee did. Trying to attack him to get his attention to get a title shot. So that's how this whole story is. I think this is going to be interesting, but we still there's still those who are concerned. You got your top heel coming in. You got your top face coming in. What's going to happen? Like, we know people are expecting Brody Lee to win. Others expecting Jane, um, Moxley, but we know for a fact maybe AEW has something up their sleeve. So I don't know that. I don't know if you guys see that too. I know that several other uh, YouTubers that I've been watching has talked about it. But all we can do is wait and see what's going to happen until we get there. So I think that's it for now what we got for, for AEW. So let's move on with NXT. We're back, so we're talking about NXT now. It started with the recap of what happened last week, as always. Uh, you know, with um, Rhea Ripley coming back to get back her title that belonged to her. Uh, all this and that. And, of course, the onslaught from Imperium to Thatcher and Riddle. And, yeah, and of course, all this stuff. Now, the first match that started was for the NXT Tag Team Championship between uh, Matt Riddle and Thatcher versus the Challengers, Imperium. Um, Fabian Eichner and Marcel uh, Barthel. As you know, Imperium has been feeling like what they've been doing is disgracing the ring, believing it's sacred, that they need to stop with these childish wage. Um, there was good moments in this match where they're trying to keep uh, Riddle from making a tag. And the more he's trying to get closer... But there was a moment that he accidentally, uh, Riddle pushed, um, what's his name, Eichner, and accidentally hit Thatcher. And Thatcher did not appreciate that. So he left Matt Riddle all by himself, to defend himself, to hold on to the titles. And sadly, it did not happen his way. Uh, Eichner and Barthel became the new NXT chat. And they said they will prove their dominance and they will bring tag team wrestling in their sacred way but if i were you guys i'd be careful because there's more dominant wrestlers like we got in we got ue's bobby fish and kyle riley we got those two gigantic hindu guys and 
grizzly young, grizzled young veterans who still want to prove that they are the true tag team champions. So, all that. Uh, next thing we go to is the confrontation after the match. Thatcher had enough of Riddle's crap and all this and that. So, he got into the face with Riddle. They were having a, a physical con uh, confrontation confrontation on the back. And they, both official, the officials and staff were trying to separate them. So, it became chaotic. Then we go to... Uh, a women's match, Tegan Knox versus Indy Hartwell, which is interesting. Um, to, I wasn't much pitched on this one, but even though I like Tegan Knox, she's really amazing. But she showed her uh, much of her in-ring work, what she should do. I mean, I know some fans who like Tegan should say she should be going for the NXT ch uh, championship because that's where she'd be coming focused, but she beat Indy Hartwell very good. Great match out of her. Next thing we see is um, Riddle getting no a message from Real Ripley from, to both Charlotte and Io Shirai. Now, <coughs> Ripley hasn't forgotten what happened to her at WrestleMania 36. But at the same time, she was dealing with Io Shirai. Io Shirai didn't appreciate Rhea Ripley showing up again. B believing that she was stealing her moment. But the problem was. Io Shirai won the match. But she did not win the title. Because Charlotte whacked her with the kendo stick. She did not get the job done. Because she did not predict it that uh, Charlotte Flair was going to do this. And she's not afraid to face off against Io Shirai. So, next week, we're going to see those two face off. <laughs> and, of course, the queen is going to leave her, uh, is going to be watching this, but we'll see what's going to happen. I wouldn't be surprised if down the line they decide to put them all in a triple threat match. Uh, then we go to the interim cruiserweight um, tournament, Group A. This one was... Uh, between to from Tony Nese and Jake Atlas. Um, as you know, Jake Atlas is currently one and one, and <coughs> was zero oh and two. So it was great. Um, it was a good match. I enjoyed <coughs> Jake Atlas, what he was doing, uh, his way of trying to prove that he can do this, be a champion. Tony Nese, who we all know has been cruise away, but he never lost the title. He wasn't pinned. He wasn't doing all that. But yeah. But frankly, I was amazed what Jake Atlas did. He put, did a cartwheel DDT on Tony Nese. And Tony Nese is out of the tournament. So basically, he's done. So basically, he's out. Uh... So I skipped this one already. It, um, I didn't. I, it was before the interim title, uh, the, the cruiserweight tournament. Matt Riddle talked to um, Realm Regal, asking for him to put him in a match against Thatcher for what he did, leaving him behind. And Thatcher, I mean, Regal accepted the, what he wanted, so he granted him permission. At the same time, while he's being interviewed about this, he gets attacked by by Thatcher. He whacked them, be, uh, even grab a, like a computer or television screen and just whack him in the back. So basically, this whole thing between them is not over yet. So that became the, <coughs> the main event. Then we see like a little Zoom segment between Undisputed Era. How you see Bobby was interacting with Kyle, who we haven't seen since for a, a couple weeks now. And then we see... Um, Bobby Fish, and then we've seen Roderick Strong, and the, everybody congr um Kyle kind of congratulated Adam Cole about winning his his match against Velveteen Dream. But there is one thing that it is bothering them is Dexter Loomis. Now we don't know what Dexter Loomis did. Now this is the second time on certain occasions Dexter Loomis showed up. First time he helped. Uh, Valentin Dream in a tag team match. Second time was a week ago during a, the the championship match.
between Adam Cole and uh, Velveteen Dream. So, everybody voted who's going to be the one to face him. And everybody said the same name. Roderick, King, uh, Roderick Strong. And he voted himself too. So, basically, we may see next week Dexter Loomis versus Roderick Strong. Strong. But it's going to be an interesting match between those two. Now, let's move on. Uh, they did a little video package with Karrion Cross <coughs> and Scarlet. I'm still waiting. When are going to put these guys in a feud with Gargano and and Larray? Because this is going to prove anything. Um, I don't think it matters if they're healing heel because here's the thing. If you ever follow Cross and his girlfriend, you know they are a perfect co power couple. Prior before WWE. But seeing them against Gargano and Larray, it's going to be interesting. So I can't wait to see that. Then uh, we go with a um, video package with Dakota Kai and, um, and Raquel Gonzalez. Dakota Kai felt throughout the time... That she's being overlooked because people were looking at Tegan. And that's when she decided to turn her back on her. And then Raquel, who's insane, believing that nothing's going to stop them. So we just wait and see where they're going to go with it. Then the next match we had... Uh, well, we have an interview with Isaiah Swerve Scott. Who is aware about what's going on with each person. So he knows that if Gallagher loot Gallagher is already um, in the verge of already excluded out. Even if he beats him, it doesn't change anything. And he made fun of Tony Nese knowing that he's out. So that kind of made things a little interesting. And of course, Hijo de Fantasma. He's the one guy he respects because he's been in a match with him. So it'll be fun to see that. Now, next we see... A special announcement by the Generation X. Uh, they talk about how they're going to do another takeover, which is going to be on the WWE Network. Um, I kind of canceled it now because, if you guys know, there was this. If you subscribe now, you get one, uh, one month free off, like a free trial. And then once the next month began, that's when all of that began. So, uh, but I know another way, so trust me. So they call it this next takeover called NFC Takeover in Your House, which is an old set uh thing that they did back years ago, and it was one of my personal favorites to watch. You know, I enjoyed watching that. I mean, I never forget the when they went um there was that match between the Hart Foundation versus Team WWF, which consisted of Goldust, Ken Shamrock, the Legion of Doom, and don't go see Boston. So, I'm excited for that. This is going to take place on June 7th. So, hope you guys can remember that. <coughs> then we jump into the match between Cameron Grimes and Finn Balor. Now, a week ago, Cameron Grimes had to open his big, fat mouth about how he wants to make a name himself, saying that he would bitch slap Finn Balor and Finn Balor did not like what he was saying. So, this match was booked. But however, Finn is still trying to figure out who attacked him a couple weeks ago. As you know, he was already scheduled to face against Velveteen Dream three weeks ago. But someone attacked him and, what was it, a week ago, he's looking for the snake who did this. And it's still unclear who was it. Now, my money was on Imperium because of the story. But I don't think that's going to happen because... Of what's going on now but that's it was but much of the match was dominant with Cameron Grimes but there was a moment where Finn Balor was already getting the momentum to fight back as soon as he fights back here comes Damian Priest out of nowhere and he hurt um, Finn Balor with a knee to with the nightstick and Cameron Grimes won the match and well Cameron Grimes, that wasn't a big upset, but that wasn't, like, to me, is is far from more between Cameron Grimes and Finn Balor down the line. Now, what happened next is Damian Priest is still unknown why he was there. 
but he revealed to him that attacking him three weeks ago is going to be, be a good thing for him. As you know, it's revealed he's the snake who attacked him. So it makes perfect sense because uh, Damien Priest wants to make a name for himself. He couldn't do that. He couldn't even beat Keith Lee for the, for the NXT North American title. Why not beat the guy who used to be the, the flag bearer of NXT? And that's pretty smart the way they're going with the story where you got this guy who's trying to make a name for himself believing that if he beats Finn Balor, his name was etched in the history books as the man who defeat Finn Balor. And if I were you, be careful what you ask for, Priest. But it's going to be a good match. I hope this is going to be in the upcoming TakeOver. Then we go for another NXT uh, Cruiserweight Tournament for the Interim Championship. Group B. This one is between Jack Gallagher and Isaiah Swerve Scott. Now, before the start of the match, Tony Nese took offense of what um, Swerve Scott said about him, about how he lost three times and he's out and all this. But Tony Nese will not appreciate him trash talking him. <coughs> so basically, it's now clear that. But with this, it kind of. I know Swerve has been in there and out the entire match. He's trying to hold on, try to stay focused, but it was too much because um, Gallagher, he is now a submission specialist. Because of Tony Nese getting in the way, uh, Jack Gallagher pick up the victory with a knockout. And that means Isaiah Swerve Scott is out, even though it's the same thing with Gallagher. So it doesn't mean anything. So the Group B competitors that are out for this is both Gallagher and Isaiah Swerve. But for Gallagher, he felt pleasure. So we may see a story between Tony Nese and Isaiah Swerve Scott. <coughs> for next week's tournament, um, they're going to have for Group A, um, what's his name? Kushida versus Drake Maverick. Now, I don't know. If the whole story with Met Drake Maverick is just a work or just a story they added, we don't know. So as you know, Kushida is currently 2-0. Drake Maverick, 1-1. One one. So basically, here's the deal. If, Drake, if Kushida wins, he moves on. He's undefeated. But if Drake Maverick loses the match in this one, he could potentially be out. So... It's more like a two out of three fall type of situation. But. <coughs> and the next match we see is another women's match between Caden Carter and Aaliyah. Now this match was more Aaliyah's trying to gain recognition because Justin Roberts was pleased what she did helping Chelsea Green pick up victory against Zia Lee. But instead um, she picked the wrong person. Cannon Carter won this match, and Justin Roberts was not too pleased. Aaliyah was more focused on trying to gain the attention of Justin Roberts, but he should have known better. Stay focused on your opponent. <coughs> so, and then we go with the next um, dinner with the Garganos. Um, as you know, the Garganos claiming that they're going to etch NXT in their image, and they're getting, they believe that they are the true heroes of of NXT and now they're targeting both Keith Lee and Mia Yim. Now the reason Gargano's attacking is now mentioning Keith Lee was because Keith Lee defeated a uh, dominant Dajakovic who knows how many times. So he thinks that he's sick and tired of that he is not basking the glory that Gargano is. And of course Candice LeRae is sick and tired that Mia Yim even though she's been on a losing streak she got an opportunity a week ago to face against Charlotte Flair. But, so it looks like, but if you got, must know, in real life, uh, Mia Yim and Keith Lee are boyfriend and girlfriend. But I don't know if they're going to put that in the story between those two teams now. But we may never know. <coughs> and then the final match was the main event between Thatcher and Riddle. So as you know, they lost the tag team titles because Thatcher walked out on on Riddle and this one was a brutal match between Riddle and Thatcher and I'm like damn he was Thatcher has been trying to break Riddle and that Riddle is doing whatever it takes to 
knock him out, trying to do whatever he can to win this match. But as a result, he did win the match. But all of a sudden, Thatcher decided to continue more with the beating, tap, making him tap, and he wouldn't let go. So that's how it ended with the with Thatcher brutalizing Matt Riddle. So we may see more con the continuing feud between Riddle and Thatcher. So that's it for now for the NXT. So uh, I'm going to end it with a news update for all of you, and we'll go from there. everybody so let's talk about the news update as you guys know um as you know there's still no confirmation yet who else that there was more people that were released during the 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 on april 15 which is remember as the black day of wwe uh it's just revealed now that rachel uh, raquel ellering the daughter of paul ellering who used to be the manager of the legion of doom she was officially released from wwe as from part of the nxt uh Basically, she's amongst them now. It's been revealed that she is returning to her old uh, independent name that she was going by, uh, Rachel Evers. So, it's going to be interesting now. But, as you know, none of the independent promotions are currently in operation because of what's going on with the COVID-19 pandemic. So, it's going to be uh, see what's going to happen. I know that um, Deanna Bizarro is currently doing podcast interviews uh, Rid, uh, Zach Ryder aka Matt Cardona is currently doing stuff on his YouTube channel but we'll see what's going to happen then next news uh, if you guys have been following the show by Vice called uh, Dark Side of the Ring they just announced their final episode of the second season uh, it's going to be the Owen Hart story now this is a story we all need to be interested in to watch as you know how Owen Hart died, but we're gonna hear the story how this happened. Is may or may not know, it seems that Owen's widow, Martha Hart, <coughs> has been distant away from the Hart family because of what happened. And not to mention, she it wants WWE to be held accountable for what happened to Owen. I mean, I don't blame her. We all know how that is. Like if, if you guys know the story, they're saying that uh, Owen Hart was afraid of heights. And why would WWE allow it to happen? But it did. So we're going to see the interviews with Martha and their son, OJ, who is going to be doing this. And it's going to be interesting what's going to happen. Because I think this is like, what other things that we don't know about, about what happened to Owen Hart. I mean, we already seen um, what happened with Chris Benoit. Like, there's more to the story. Um, same thing with... Uh, Jimmy Snuka and his girlfriend and many others. And the last episode before this one was about the Road Warriors. I hope you guys catch that one. That one's a really good one. I have to say, um, there have been some pretty good episodes that they put out for that. So I hope you guys enjoyed those. So right now, get ready for the Owen Hart. I'm excited. I hope you guys can excited. I will do a review on that one once it comes out. So... I think that's about it for today. So I hope you guys are staying great, staying home, wash your hands, um, make sure you have your face mask on. So I must bid all of you adieu. So goodbye. And have a nice, lovely day. Bang!